We got ourselves a new little project for the channel. Got an MGA Mark II here. We got to do a little bit of welding on. So we're going to be putting floor rails and doing some patching on the frame here on this thing. I've already started cutting some of the floor rails out here. We got a bunch of the replacement floor rails that came from Moss. There is one, I think it's this one here that we're missing right now that can't be bought at the moment. So we might have to make that one. We'll see. But we got a bunch of uh, pitting that's pretty deep down through here. And there was a couple of holes here and there. And we got a bunch right in through here too. Now, yeah, I know the chassis is already painted. The guy that owns this thing has actually been waiting for, a, has had this project in his garage for a while, been waiting to get in. He's been trying to take this project as far as he could himself. And he got in here and wire brushed everything, painted everything with chassis black. And then he's just gonna have to go back and touch up everywhere that I work on it and then paint all the new stuff that I put in. This guy had been collecting parts for a number of years for this thing, trying getting ready to bring it over here. And, but one of the things he ended up with was these replacement rails. Um, some of the stuff he's bought brand new from say Moss or whatever, and other stuff he's picked up along the way from other restorers that had stuff left over from their projects or from shops that went out of business, things like that. So he has a bunch of, a bunch of stuff, some stuff he does need, some stuff he won't, but he ended up having those already. And this has been repaired before, not really well, and it's pitted really bad here. And this side isn't that much better. Of course, it's pretty normal in this part of the country to see these looking pretty rough. And it's already had some repair done through here, which isn't too bad, but we got more to do to it. And like these is just bar stock. Uh, so we're probably gonna replace all those with the proper rails with all the nuts and everything in them. Now I'm not too happy with these pieces here myself. It's got a lot of tooling marks in it from whatever they used to bend them in and a lot of puckering here and here, along with these things getting pretty narrow here from being stretched. So they obviously were not bent the same way the factory ones were bent and they don't look the same. I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna tackle that yet, but I'll figure it out. Now, since the source of metal that I have used for years is no longer around, he actually stopped and picked up these strips of 14 gauge for me to use to patch all of the frame rails so that I didn't have to go chasing down metal. So now all I gotta do now is get in there, figure out where I'm gonna cut, start cutting and welding. So one of the constant challenges in doing restorations like this is where do you start and where do you stop when you're cutting? Because you look at the the metal and the pitting, how far do you cut? Where do you stop? How, you know, um, my rule of thumb here is if you're welding in a patch piece here, if you think you can't weld to it properly without it wanting to blow through, then you probably haven't cut far enough. So what I'm going to do here is I mark this here just up above the radius. That gives me a nice strong point here. The radius will still be there, it'll look good. And all that's nice and strong on this car. So I made a line across here. And since my metal is actually four inches wide, I just came up four inches and went across. Now I don't need to go four inches. Three inches would be plying, plenty to get past this. And down here, it doesn't even need to be that much. But since the metal I have is already four inches wide, that's what I'm going with. And actually that'll make it a little bit easier in the long run because you're staying close to this radius here and you're not, um, you don't have to worry about the metal moving as much because when you weld a metal, the heat will make it move. Like if you got two pieces of metal like this and you weld across here, it'll want to pull like this. So it's going to want to pull that frame rail in like this and not stay flat. This will actually help it keep it from doing that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut across here 
and then come across here and curve it up a little bit and go all the way back into here since we got a pretty good bit of pitting in through here. And we'll come up really close to this. Now before I even start cutting, I cut my one piece down to approximately the length I'm going to end up wanting it, maybe a hair longer, and I started bending it here to fit to the frame rail before we cut this out. That way it's easier to get this shape here. And you have to remember when making bending stuff like this, when you're rolling things, is it's okay to go a little too far with it. It's easier to flatten, to just take it and flatten it out a little bit to make it fit than it is to get a little bit more out of it. So if you go a hair too much, that's no problem at all. So now it's time to start cutting this out. Normally with a cutoff wheel, I would say plunge that thing nice and deep. That keeps you a really straight line. But I knew that this was in here somewhere and I couldn't remember the exact location. I didn't want to just cut into that. This is a heat resistant uh, felt, I believe, that is there for sound deadening to keep drumming noises out of the interior. So I need to clean all this uh, crap out of here. Maybe get the shot back out. Suck all that up, clean everything up. Get this to actually fit the way I want it and trim down to the right size. And I can weld it in. So I sprayed the inside of the frame rail after cleaning it out with a phosphoric acid based rust treatment. And I've sprayed the back side of the patch panel with etch primer and I've got it all trimmed up and fitting pretty nicely here. So now we just need to start tacking this thing in. my hammer. I don't have my rotor quite hot enough. I have to turn it up a little bit for 
actually welding it. Looks like I cut it just a hair short up here, but that's all right, I can fill that up, no problem. So now uh, I'm ready to clean this off and actually weld it. So after cleaning the welds down a little bit, I actually went and packed tacked in between again, make sure it was nice and smooth and like got spots like this that want to move around. Now just remember when you're doing this at home, it's actually more important to get a good penetrating weld than it is to make a beautiful weld. We'd all like to have just absolutely fabulous welds, but um, you know, a beautiful weld that doesn't hold is n no good, really. So even if you have to turn it up just a little hotter where you're on that edge, where you really can't go that far and you might be burning through because of some rust in the backside, that you're better off making sure you got good penetration, good solid penetration, especially when you have something like this where you want to grind it off flush. The other thing you can do with these two is you can actually build a small gap in here, weld into that gap, and that'll help as well. Well, it looks like my gas is a little too low to actually weld this out. So I'm getting too much porosity in the weld. So I'm gonna have to stop right here, get some gas and finish later. So if you enjoy the welding and fabrication videos like this, drop a comment below, let me know. Cause I do have something in the works right now. It's gonna be a whole lot more fabrication than this and not exactly stock stuff either.